classifications of waivers. Wave, it can be divided into two types. Okay, this is according to the way they propagate. Eh? The way they pro propagate, uh, we divide waivers into two types, transverse wave and longitudinal wave. Eh? Transverse wave and longitudinal wave. Uh, this is transverse wave and this is longitudinal wave. So what's the difference between these two waivers? I, I show you the examples, eh? okay? Then uh, straight away you will know what it is. Let me show you transverse wave first, eh? Transverse wave. Okay, these are flash animations here. Now this is a transverse wave, eh? Transverse wave. Okay, let me draw a line just for you to see. Now you see uh, this wave is actually moving from left to right. You see, uh, you see the pulse. Okay, this is the pulse, each one, uh, each crest, this is a pulse, okay? You can see that the pulse is actually moving from left to right, right? It moves from left to right, okay? But the vibrations of the medium, okay? All these uh, red particles, uh, this is the particles of the mediums, uh, the particles of the medium. So the vibrations of the particles is up and down. The wave move from left to right. Okay, the vibrations of the particles is up and down. So the vibrations of the particles is at right angle, 90 degree yeah, with the directions of the wave, right? So these types of wave is called transverse wave. Yeah? This is called transverse wave. Transverse wave is the wave where the vibrations of the medium or, or the particles of the medium is perpendicular to the directions of the propagations. Okay, the wave propagates to the right, but the particles vibrates up and down. So they are at right angles. Huh? So this is transverse wave. Okay, this is longitudinal wave. Huh? Okay. Now you see this wave is also moving from left to right. Okay. And the vibrations of the particles is also left to right. The particle also vibrates left, right. Eh? The wave also moves from left to right. The vibrations of the particles of the medium is parallel to the directions of the propagations. Propagation means the mo motions of the wave. Eh? So they are parallels. Just right here they are. So they are parallels. So for these types of wave, uh, where the vibrations of the particle is parallel to the directions of the propagations, we call this longitudinal wave. Okay, so this is called longitudinal wave. So we have two types of wave, transverse wave and longitudinal wave. Let's go back to the slide. So we have two types of wave, transverse wave. So what is transverse wave? A transverse wave is a wave where the particles of the medium vibrates or oscillate in a direction that is perpendicular. Perpendicular means at right angle, 90 degree, to the directions of the wave motions. Okay, it looks something like this. Eh? Longitudinal wave. A longitudinal wave is a wave where the particles of the medium vibrate in a direction that is parallel to the directions of the wave motions. So. It looks something like this. And you need to know some examples of transverse wave. Most of the wave are transverse wave. Light wave, ripple, radio wave. Most of the wave that you can name, yeah, okay, is transverse wave. Uh, only a few of them are, are, are longitudinal wave. Ripple is a uh, water wave, okay? If you throw a stone inside a pond, Okay, then you can see the wave, right? Uh, that, that wave is called ripple. It's a water wave, eh? It's a water wave. The wave that you see uh, near the seaside, that's called oceanic wave. Oceanic wave, there's a, it's also a water wave, but it's bigger, uh, bigger water wave, eh? Okay, actually their motion is slightly different. The so ripples and oceanic wave are slightly different. But anyway, most of the wave are transverse wave, okay? Except what? Except sound wave. Sound wave. Uh, there's another one is called seismic wave. That is the wave that caused by uh, earthquake. Yeah, earthquakes. Uh, uh, that's longitudinal wave. 
actually we have a transverse seismic wave and longitudinal seismic wave that both eh? okay we also have so if you want you can write there seismic wave eh? but usually in exam they would just ask one eh? okay but if you want to know more seismic seismic wave is another uh, longitudinal wave another one is the wave that you created by using slinky spring slinky spring eh? uh, you can use sl slinky springs to produce longitudinal wave as well okay i'll show you later this one if in exam they ask you to give an examples of longitudinal wave uh, just give sound wave okay just give sound wave for the others if you don't know fine you don't need to memorize eh? for seismic wave this is a wave that created by a uh, earthquake but anyway you don't need to know that so that is the difference between transverse wave and uh, longitudinal wave. Uh, there are difference in the directions of the propagation, uh, sorry, directions of the vibrations of the particles. Eh? And you need to know some examples. Uh. Okay, transverse wave, uh, for transverse wave, okay, it vibrates up and down when while the wave moves from left to right. So therefore it has crest and trough, eh? crest and trough. Crest is the highest displacement, eh? displacement where uh, the level is highest, it's called a crest, and then the lowest is called a trough. Okay. But this is important for us to find wavelength. It's very important eh, for you to know about crest and trough. Eh? Longitudinal wave, we have something like this. Okay, this is a, this is the longitudinal wave created by a slinky spring. Eh? Slinky springs. Okay. Okay. Now for longitudinal wave. Uh, we have compression. We don't have uh, crest and trough. Eh? Okay, we don't have crest and trough for longitudinal wave. But for longitudinal wave, we have uh, compressions. Okay, compressions. Compression is the regions where uh, the pressure is the highest. Eh? Okay, let me write here. Highest pressure. Highest pressure. And rarefactions is the area where we have lowest pressure. So for longitudinal wave, we don't have crest and trough, but we have compressions and rarefactions. So for slinky springs, when when you see those uh, the the coil of the spring very close to each other, then it's compressions. And if the coils are very far from each other, then they are rarefactions. Okay, so you need to know eh, compressions and rarefactions for a longitudinal wave because in exam sometimes they will ask you to label where is the compressions and where is the rarefactions and they will ask you at, at which points the pressure is the highest and at which points the pressure is lowest. Usually we are referring to sound wave. Eh? Okay, lowest or uh, highest pressure that is referring to sound wave. So that is what you need to know about longitudinal wave, eh? the compressions and the very factions.